Pensacola Beach isn't just your everyday beach bum paradise. It's a stretch of the Gulf Coast that punches well above its weight class, with sands like powdered sugar and waters the color of the finest emerald you have ever laid eyes on. It's no wonder this place gets shout outs from TripAdvisor and USA Today. But dig a little deeper beneath that postcard perfect surface and you'll find a rich, swirling history as deep and dramatic as the Gulf itself. This place isn't just a spot to soak up rays. It's a canvas of stories. A place where every grain of sand seems to whisper secrets of the past. Yeah, Pensacola Beach is a real stunner. But it's the depth beneath the beautiful facade that truly makes it worth the trip. Back in the bone-chilling winter of 1539, Francisco Maldonado, the loyal lieutenant to the ruthless Hernando de Soto, first trod these shores, setting the stage for what was to be the very first crack at Spanish colonization in North America. By 1559, Don Tristan de Luna, yeah, El Rilano, was elbow deep in the sandy soils of this very island, commanding an ambitious, although doomed, settlement. But as history would have it, hurricanes and famine tore through his dreams, leaving nothing but whispers and wreckage by 1561. For centuries afterwards, this place lay dormant, a silent witness to the ebb and flow of tides and time. Until the 1930s rolled around and birthed the Casino Resort, Pensacola Beach's first flirtation with tourism serving up a cocktail of beauty pageants, fishing derbies, and fisticuffs. Ownership? That's a tricky term here. Since its days under federal thumb, the land has been leased out by the Santa Rosa Island Authority, ensuring that everything built here from dive bars to sun decks is rooted in transient terms. 99-year leases that echo with the impertinence of everything that has come before it. On Pensacola Beach, every grain of sand tells a story. Every wave sings a saga. Come for the sunsets, stay for the tales. Imagine a stretch of sand that's not just a backdrop for sunburned tourists and overzealous frisbee games, but a battleground where the unassuming, like you and me, come face to face with the brute force of nature. Here's where the humble beach flag steps up, not so much waving as warning. Since 2004, thanks to the clipboard warriors at the International Life Saving Federation, these flags have been our frontline defenses, our unsung heroes in the fight against the ocean surprises. Each color screams a different caution. The green flag is your go ahead, whispering all's clear, as inviting as a cold beer after a long day. But then there's the red flag, throwing up a stop sign in the wind, screaming danger like a hot stove or a bad street taco. But let's not overlook the double red. This isn't just advice, it's an order. The water is off limits. Go find a bar and tell your stories there. Yellow will have you on your toes, warning of conditions that could toss you around like a salad. And purple, it's not just pretty, it's alerting you to wildlife that doesn't care about your vacation plan. This whole system, maintained by the stalwarts at the United States Life Saving Association and upheld by beach communities, isn't just some bureaucratic tape. It's a lifeline. They're out there putting up flags and signs, making sure you can read the beach like a menu, knowing exactly what you're getting into. It's about letting you soak up the sun without getting knocked down by the unseen. So next time you're at the beach, give a nod to the humble flag. It might just be the best beach buddy you've ever had.
Pensacola Beach is the name of the town that sits on Santa Rosa Island. There are numerous beaches that surround this sun-soaked community. I'm going to take you to five of them, from the most crowded to the most serene. Our first stop is Quietwater Beach. This isn't just another sandy stretch along the Florida coast. It's a sanctuary tucked away on the sound side of Pensacola Beach, where the waters are as calm as the morning itself, perfect for the little ones just getting their sea legs. This place is an anomaly, a bustling hub wrapped in a serene vibe where the shell anchors the Pensacola Beach boardwalk. Out here, life is a buffet. You can grab a kayak, wrestle with the jet ski, or if you're feeling a bit more contemplative, take a gentle stroll down the promenade where the gulf air softens even the hardest hearts. It's the kind of spot that comes with the promise of no hassle, park your car, and just let the day unfold. Quiet Water Beach offers a tapestry of experiences, a blend of tranquility and spirited adventure, making it a cornerstone of any visit to Pensacola Beach. Whether you're here to thrash around in the surf or just soak up the sun with your feet buried in the sand, this is where you would want to anchor your day. It's the full Florida. Family friendly, yet bold enough to keep even the most restless traveler engaged. Quiet Water Beach has bathrooms, picnic tables, playgrounds, and it is wheelchair accessible. Casino Beach, located on the Gulf side of Santa Rosa Island, just a stone throw from the quirky beach ball shaped Pensacola Beach water tower, isn't just your typical stretch of Florida sand. It's a full-blown sensory overload. With its sugar white sands and emerald green waters, this place is a high octane playground where the Gulf Coast heart beats loudest. Named after a bygone casino that once danced the night away on these shores, Casino Beach is a swirling mix of old and new. Here, amenities are key. Restrooms, concessions, picnic spots, flanked by an army of beach vendors. You can drop a line off the Pensacola Beach Gulf Pier or just kick back and enjoy the Gulf's cinematic views. This beach isn't just about sunbathing, it's where adrenaline junkies and families find common ground. Whether you're here to BYOB and soak up the sun or you prefer the tamer, alcohol-free zones with your kids, there's a spot with your name on it. Lifeguards are on duty from April through September, making it a safe haven for swimmers. And let's not forget the pro water cross races and other events that dot the calendar, keeping the spirit of that old casino alive. Where once were blackjack tables and roulette wheels, now there are surfboards and jet skis. Casino Beach encapsulates the Florida Beach vibe, but cranks it up a notch, making it not just a place to visit, but a place to experience. So if you're looking for a beach that is lively as it is picturesque, where the ghost of a gambling past meets the thrill of beachfront futures. Casino Beach is your bet. Rated top notch by travelers and critics alike, it's a testament to the enduring allure of good, clean, and a little bit rowdy, fun by the sea. Opal Beach, nestled on Santa Rosa Island, right where the Gulf Islands National Seashore sprawls out east of Pensacola Beach. It's a place where the sand is so brilliantly white, it's like walking on a sheet of sun-bleached paper. A rare glimpse into what Florida's barriers islands might have looked like before the rest of the world found them. Named for the havoc wrecked by Hurricane Opal, a beast of a Category 4 storm. This stretch is all beautifully crushed dunes and pristine quiet, a far cry from the usual beachside circus. Cruising along scenic Highway 399, you pull over not for the chaos of beach volleyball and boomboxes, but for a day of laid-back picnicking, fishing, or just soaking up some rays while the gulf waters glitter under the unforgiving sun. It's the kind of spot where you can actually hear the sand squeaking underfoot, a little concert of quartz crystals, and the waves roll in rhythmic whispers rather than roars. Facilities here? They got you covered. Restrooms that flush, shower to wash off the salt and sand, and pavilions for that impromptu beach lunch. Unlike Casino Beach, 
Opal Beach has no lifeguards on duty, so take that in consideration when making your decision about which beach you want to swim at. No need to jostle for a spot to plant your umbrella or wonder if some beachgoer is going to kick sand in your face. Opal Beach is about as tranquil as it gets, a real gem on the Emerald Coast, far removed from the usual tourist traps. So if you're looking for some solitude, a place to reconnect with the raw, untouched charm of nature. Opal Beach is where you can go to escape the madness. It's as close to a private island as you can get without dropping a few million. Trust me, it's worth the detour. Ah, Langdon Beach. This gym, tucked away within the Gulf Islands National Seashore, is just a hop, skip, and a jump from Pensacola Beach. It is just the kind of place you visit to escape the script. It's not just the scenery. Though the powdery sands and gentle gulf breezes are enough to win anyone over, it's the soul of the place. Located at the western tip of Santa Rosa Island, Langdon Beach is where you go to find a piece of the old Florida. It's sparsely populated, giving you room to breathe, to wander, or just kick back and watch the sort of sea and sand scene that puts your primetime TV to shame. Here the sand whispers stories of yore, from shipwrecks to hidden treasures, as you tread lightly, combing for seashells and the occasional sand dollar, reminders of the Gulf's generous deposits. Close by historical titans like the Landon Battery and Fort Pickens stand guard, their crumbling walls proud and defiant, offering a gritty contrast to the beach's serene tableau. Facilities? They got them. Nothing fancy, but the essentials. Parking, a bathhouse, a picnic pavilion for that impromptu lunch. It's the kind of low-key comfort that speaks to beach veterans who prefer their shorelines with a side of history and a dash of adventure. And if you ever feel like the crowd's picking up, just a few steps along the shore and you'll find a more secluded spot where the gulf meets the sky in quiet conspiracy. So if you're planning to drop by Langdon Beach, come for the sun and sand, sure, but stay for the echoes of the past and the unspoiled charm. It's an unscripted journey into the heart of the Pensacola Beach. Pensacola Beach isn't just a stop on the map, it's your front row seat to the grand spectacle of Florida's Gulf Coast. Here, the sand is so white it could blind you, and the water, a kind of emerald green you'd swear they'd lift it straight out of a Caribbean postcard. This is the spot to drop all pretenses and just be. Grab an umbrella and a couple of chairs for around $50. Sprawl out and let the world fade away. You'll see the local birds putting on a show, diving and darting at the water's edge. It's nature's own reality TV. And the water, it invites you with a warmth and clarity that matches the best of the tropics. I've chased horizons and tasted the sea spray on countless shores. And let me tell you, Pensacola Beach, it's in the big leagues, right up there with the most jaw-dropping beaches I have ever planted my feet on. And one of the very best ways of visiting Pensacola Beach proper is by staying in one of the amazing high-rise hotels that line it. I rolled into the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott, slung over the sun-drenched sands of Pensacola Beach. The joint, with its 209 rooms, throws you a front-row seat to the Gulf of Mexico, where clear turquoise waters crash into untouched sands like some kind of blue-collar ballet. This wasn't just some crash pad for my gear. It was the opening chapter to a coastal hangout where plush luxury shakes hands with the beach bum vibe. The mood at Fairfield was easy, the kind of place that doesn't just shake your hand, but offers you a cold beer and a smile. It's where I made memories against a backdrop so starkly beautiful you think it was photoshopped. Whether I was in the mood to disconnect and disappear or dive headfirst into some aquatic annex, this spot was more than up to the task putting me right in the middle of some of the most amazing scenery I have ever laid eyes on. 
Stepping into my room, I was hit with a wave of indulgence so thick you could cut it with a knife. Down by the gulf, the hotel sports the region's largest lazy river. This mammoth serpentine beast that beckons you to drift under the sun without a care. There's also this adults only pool, a quiet refuge from the daily grind. When the water got old, I could sink into a bubbling jacuzzi or let a whirlpool scrub the day's weight off my shoulders. Come nightfall, the fire pit called out like a siren, a friendly beacon in the night offering warmth and good company under a sky littered with stars. The sprawling pool deck tied it all together, a regal stage set for soaking up rays, shooting the breeze, or just drinking on those vast ocean views. Staying here wasn't just about renting a room, it was a full-on sensory assault created to suck you in and spit you out refreshed, whether you're here to chill or chase a venture. Pull up a chair at Fish Heads, the on-site restaurant at Fairfield Inn and Suites, Pensacola Beach, where the backdrop is as breathtaking as the menu. With an unfettered view of the beach and a spread that sings of the sea, this spot exudes a vibe that's both laid back and attentive. Service here isn't just friendly, it's downright earnest, aiming to please with every plate delivered. Kick off with a calamari, flash fried to a perfect golden crisp, tender within, and jazzed up with jalapenos for that extra zing, dipped into a sauce that's nothing short of amazing. Move on to the main course, the margarita shrimp tacos. A hefty helping of grilled shrimp, each bite a testament to the grill's magic stuffed into a tortilla that's part corn, part flour, and all delicious. Topped off with coleslaw and chips for a crunch that complements the softness of the shrimp taco. This isn't just dining, it's an experience. A beachside banquet where each dish promises to be as memorable as the view. At Fairfield Inn and Suites, Pensacola Beach, it's not just about a room with a view, it's about crafting experience. Here, you stay connected with complimentary Wi-Fi that blankets every corner of the property. A crucial lifeline for both the work warrior and the social media savant. And if you find yourself in need of a snack or extra sunscreen, the on-site convenience store is your treasure trove. Stacked with all the essentials and then some, this place doesn't just host you, it understands you. In the mad sun-soaked scramble of a beach holiday, it's the humble beach town gift shop that often saves the day. Forget the sunscreen, that hat, or the ever essential flip-flops. These joints are sanctuaries of salvation, piled with not just the essentials, but also the kitsch, the snow globes, those shark teeth necklaces, and yes, those mandatory t-shirts that scream, I was there, man. But it's not all trinkets and throwaways. Every dollar dropped in these small shops feeds the lifeblood of the local economy, turning tourist dollars into local livelihoods, preserving the vibrant, gritty charm of places like Pensacola Beach. These shops do more than sell stuff, they're the lifelines that keep the coastal dream alive, ensuring that the beaches we love don't just survive, but thrive. So next time you're there, throw some love and cash their way. Grab that garish tee and wear it like a badge of honor. Alvin's Island isn't just a place, it's a portal to that salty, sandy nirvana that beach bums and sun gods swear by. Think about it. A strip of paradise launched back in 57 on Panama City Beach's Front Beach Road. Fast forward and this joint is now the heavyweight champ of beach store chains across the southeastern United States with a footprint that spans 34 spots across Florida and Alabama. Here's the scoop, they dish out a killer selection of beach gear that doesn't just whisper sun and surf, it screams it. From high grade beachwear and the kind of souvenirs that scream, I've been to the edge and back to all the essential accessories you can't hit the sand without. 
The racks are loaded with the hottest brands. Fox, Roxy, Columbia, Tommy Bahama, and more. Ensuring you're decked out with nothing but the best. But Alvin's isn't just about selling you a piece of cloth or a slick pair of shades. It's about selling an experience, a lifestyle. It's a place you go when you want to take a slice of the beach back home, be it through a breezy t-shirt, a hat that's seen some sun, or beach-themed knickknacks for your path. The crew at Alvin's? Top shelf. They're not just clerks, they're your beach guys. Gear gurus who are all about making your shopping spree as chill as a sea breeze. Affordable? You bet. Because soaking in the sun shouldn't mean burning through your wallet. So whether you're a local wave catcher or a one-time Sandy Foot visitor, Alvin's Island is your go-to to gear up and kick back. Back in 1959, in the unassuming town of Ship Bottom, New Jersey, Rhonda Mina decided to carve out a slice of the surfer's dream. Thus was born Ron John Surf Shop, a haven now deeply embedded in the surfing and bodyboarding culture. This isn't just any surf shop. We're talking about a sprawling empire of saltwater soaked gear, spearheaded by their flagship store in Cocoa Beach, Florida. The biggest surf shop in the world. A temple where wave riders pay homage. From the sun-drenched shores of Orange Beach, Alabama to the bustling tourist sands of Clearwater Beach, Florida, Ron John has planted its flag. 13 stores spread across the U.S., each pumping the heart of local beach towns. From Myrtle's Beach to Ocean City and even reaching into the turquoise waters of Grand Turk and Cosmel, Mexico. Ron John isn't just a store, it's a pilgrimage site for those who live at the mercy of the tides and the thrill of the next big wave. Bucky's isn't just a chain, it's a roadside revelation. The sprawling empire of country stores and gas stations, a vertical beacon for the weary travelers. Birthed from the bold vision of one arch beefer Alpin III back in 1982 in the unassuming town of Clute, Texas. Its headquarters, nestled in Lake Jackson, Texas, orchestrated an ever-growing dance of expansion that began in earnest with the opening of its first travel center in Lulling, Texas in 2003. At Bucky's, it's more than fuel and snacks. It's about the promise of the open road, the allure of freedom, a nod to the big, bold spirit of America itself. In 2018, Bucky's blasted past the borders of the Lone Star State to plant its flag proudly in Baldwin County, Alabama, signaling its audacious national ambitions. Pulling off the road at Bucky's, number 42 in the lineup, right here along the pulsing artery of Interstate 10. This isn't just any stop. Oh no, it's a sanctuary for the wary and sun-hungry souls driving the stretch from New Orleans to Pensacola Beach. Here at Bucky's, you gear up on essentials while dodging the tourist chaos of Pensacola Beach's weekend markets. Sunscreen, bathing suits, boogie boards, and beach chairs. You name it, they got it. Stacked and ready. And the food? It's the stuff of road trip legend. A perfect match for their obsessively clean restrooms. It's a peculiar oasis, this Bucky's where convenience meets beach-bound anticipation, a slice of Americana with a side of beaver nuggets. Pensacola Beach Gulf Pier isn't just a pier. It's a rebirth from the watery depths, a defiant stand against the ravages of Hurricane Opal back in 95. It stretches a robust 1,400 feet into the heart of the Gulf of Mexico. More than just a number, it's a lifeline for both the diehard and the casual fishermen, running on the kind of 24-hour cycle that speaks to insomniacs and dreamers alike. Rebuilt with brawny hex-shaped concrete and wooden panels heavy enough to flirt with gravity, this pier is engineered to dance with hurricanes and live to tell the tale. Here, you can grab a rod and reel and a cooler without a blink. 
Rentals are easy and no one's going to hassle you for a fishing license. A few bucks get you a 24-hour pass. The kind of ticket that lets you either wrestle with the waves or just breathe in the salty spectacle. As you wander this pier, keep your eyes peeled. The water's a live show. Manatees, dolphins, sea turtles, sleek rays, and even the odd shark make cameos, playing out nature's script beneath your feet. And if you're really looking to thread your story into the local fishing lore, check out Panhandle Salt Beach Fishing. It's more than gear, it's a gateway to the kind of fishing tales that start with a whisper and end with a shout. This pier is not just a structure, it's a passage to the wild, watery soul of Florida. The Pensacola Beach Boardwalk isn't just a strip of wood by the water. Oh no, it's a cultural crossroads. A meeting point where the laid-back vibe of Florida crashes into a sea of possibilities. Picture this. You're wandering down this lovely promenade with the Santa Rosa sound providing the perfect backdrop. A canvas painted with the hues of Florida's soul. This is where the locals mingle with outsiders, where every step can lead to a new discovery. From the tempting dishes served up in a diverse array of restaurants, to the serene moments spent on sandy stores that stretch their arms open wide in welcome. As you saunter along, you're hit by the eclectic mix of shops. Ron John's surf shop slinging its surf gear. Ardor Boutique with this trove of unique jewelry and home decor. This boardwalk is a treasure chest where each shop offers a snippet of local flavor and craftsmanship tailored to every style and pocketbook. When hunger strikes, this place transforms into a culinary tour. You can grab a quick beer and bite at a no frills eatery or sit down for a lavish meal of the freshest seafood and fish you can possibly imagine. Prepared by chefs who know their craft and the local catch. And once you're fed, the real adventure begins at Quiet Water Beach, paddleboarding, kayaking, or just basking in the sun. The Pensacola Beach Boardwalk, with its unending activities and vibrant atmosphere, captures the essence of Florida and every grain of sand and splash of water. It's not just a place to visit, it's a place to live a slice of life by the gulf, under the sun, in the rhythm of the waves. Here, every visit weaves a story, and trust me, you'll want to be a character in this narrative. In this sleepy area of Florida, the late 80s flipped the script with a surreal twist right out of a sci-fi flick. Local contractor Ed Walters found himself the epicenter of what would become a notorious UFO frenzy. It all started off one night in 1987, when a blue beam like something straight out of Star Trek, froze him in his tracks. Ed did what any self-respecting Shutterbud would do. He snapped some Polaroids. But this was just the appetizer. The main course included close encounters of the bizarre kind, featuring alien drop-offs and telepathic exchanges in not one, but two languages, and levitational annex courtesy of our friendly blue beam. As Ed's photos hit the pages of the Gulf Breeze Sentinel, the quiet coastal community turned into a hot spot for UFO chasers. Skeptics and believers alike debated in diners and docks, their conversations fueled by the mysterious orange and blue lights that danced across the Florida skies. Whether truth or tall tale, Ed Waters served up a story that had everyone looking up. Swing by UFOs, where the gulf meets the galaxy in this newly spruced up cosmic themed mini golf course that's just a stone's throw away from some of the planet's most pristine sands. It's an offbeat paradise where family members, even those you have suspect of being extraterrestrial, can putt through 18 holes of pure joy and a hefty dose of kitsch. By day, dive into the ice cream bar or duke it out in the arcade. When the sun dips, the place transforms with a golf course that is seemingly approved by our intergalactic visitors. UFOs isn't just a spot for a party, 
It's a full-blown escape into a universe of fun under the sun. Dive into the less traveled waters of Pensacola Beach with a jolly sailing and dolphin cruise for a snorkeling expedition that's anything but ordinary. Forget the exotic coral reefs of distant shores. Here in the quiet bays of Pensacola, you'll discover an underwater scene that's raw, unpolished, and utterly mesmerizing. This isn't just a dip in the ocean. It's a two and a half hour plunge into a world where nature writes the rules. The adventure kicks off the moment you step into the marina. There's no pomp here, just the salty, straightforward welcome of the captain, a guide who knows these waters like the back of his calloused hand. He'll give you the rundown, safety first, because even in the calmest waters, respect is key. Then you're off, cutting through the gulf's warm waters where dolphins might just escort you to your dive spot. The snorkeling here isn't about Technicolor reefs. It's about the subtle dance of marine life in its most honest form. Schools of fish flip by in choreographed chaos, darting around rocks and seagrass. Nature's own ballet. As you float, the world's noise fades, replaced by the rhythm of your own breathing and the occasional splash of a seabird diving in for its next meal. Below, the relics of human folly, rusting away, taken by the sea, whisper stories of a world above water, relentless and consuming. On your way back, keep your eyes peeled for ospreys, nature's own sentinel soaring above, perhaps as a reminder of the wild beauty you're leaving behind, but promise to return to. This isn't just snorkeling, it's a Sunday sermon delivered by the sea. Imagine a drink so sinfully delightful that it carved its own slice of history into the sunny shores of Pensacola. That's the Bushwhacker, a concoction that might as well be the illicit love child of a chocolate milkshake and a Caribbean rum punch. Over 40 years ago, Linda Taylor Murphy stumbled upon this chocolatey, icy rum gem in the Virgin Islands. With a pirate spirit, and a bartender savvy, she hijacked the recipe, hauled it back to her sand shaker lounge in Pensacola Beach, and gave it a home in 1975. This isn't just a drink, it's a cultural invasion in a glass, marching up and down the Florida coast, conquering bar menus, and seducing palates with its creamy, boozy swagger. Each joint along the coast spins its own version, guarding their secret tweaks like a treasure map. Come August, Pensacola Beach explodes into a festival that's all about the bushwhacker. Picture this, rum tastings, live music, the whole nine yards, celebrating this local legend that's even snagged itself a bottling gig with bushwhacker spirits. This is more than a cocktail, it's a full-blown phenomenon. This is what you'll need to make a bushwhacker at home. You're gonna start off with two ounces of dark rum. Now, dark rum is a term that doesn't have a legal definition, but it generally refers to rum that is dark brown in appearance due to its aging or the addition of molasses or caramel coloring. Expect notes of vanilla, brown sugar, and toffee, along with a little bit of sweetness, which makes this type of rum an excellent choice to sip or use in a variety of cocktails. Next, we're going with one ounce of Kahlua. This is a coffee liqueur. Now you may scoff at the tiny little bottle there, but Kahlua doesn't age well. It is better to buy a small amount than keep it around the house and have it go bad over time. Next up, we're going with one ounce of dark cream de cacao. Cream de cacao doesn't have to be refrigerated after you open it, which gives it a longer life in your liquor cabinet. Plus, it's a chocolate liqueur, and I love chocolate. Two ounces Irish cream liqueur. The wee bottle means that it has to be refrigerated after it's opened, which means I don't want it sitting around the house. Buy a smaller bottle. It'll save you money, unless you're making multiple cocktails or going to use it in different recipes. And finally, one ounce cream of coconut. Now cream of coconut you'll have to refrigerate 
but I use this in many different cocktails. And the trick is to take it out of the refrigerator a few hours before you're gonna use it. It'll give you a better consistency. Once you have assembled your ingredients, the actual making of the bushwhacker is really easy. Put all your ingredients into the blender with a cup of ice, blend it on high for 30 seconds until it is all combined and frothy. Pour the contents of the blender into a tiki glass and then top with whipped cream and a cherry. Enjoy, but enjoy responsibly. Remember, as always, the full recipe will be on the Gulf Coastal Connections community page. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. And smash that subscription button because you don't want to miss a second of what Gulf Coastal Connections is going to be up to this summer. And if you were unfortunate enough to miss our last episode, New Orleans Frozen Delights, Chasing the Perfect Snowball, go watch it now. It's hot out there and it's only going to get hotter. So watch the video. You will thank me for it. I will leave a link in the descriptions. And you would kick yourself if you missed our next episode. Gumbo Dreams and Beignet Breezes. Savoring the soul of New Orleans culinary magic. We're going to be talking about gumbo, jambalaya, poor boys, beignets, pralines. Talking culture, history, and tradition. But it's not all about the past. We're going to the top spots today to get these New Orleans iconic dishes. Mr. Ed's on St. Charles Street to get the jambalaya. Killers in the quarter get the poor boy. Heard that kitchen on Felicity for the gumbo. You don't want to miss this episode. Savoring the soul of New Orleans culinary magic is going to air next Tuesday, May 28th. So be there. And remember, it's not goodbye, it's see you next Tuesday on Gulf Coastal Connections.